Hey folks, this is Matt AK Slash, and welcome back to Slash Feeds the Beast. We're going to do a little experiment today based on something a viewer commented on, I think it was the most recent episode, one of the most recent episodes anyway. With this skeleton soul shard, we may be able to get a wither skeleton farm going in the nether. Whoa, hello, pigman. I know with, in vanilla, with spawn eggs, you get a, um, 80% chance that a skeleton spawn egg will actually spawn, whoa, hello, will actually spawn a wither skeleton. There we go. And that may also be true with the soul shard. So I think I'm going to just go ahead and place this uh, first and see what we get. So let me just place one of these. Actually, let's go ahead and place it up so that they just die. Because this is just a test. Let's go here with it and then we will need this I think we'll place the lever on it too just to be on the safe side turn that off for the time being put that in all right let's see what happens regular skeleton regular skeleton hmm I don't think that that's going to work because it looks like it's spawning just regular skeletons all the time. I think I'd have to actually make a wither skeleton spawner, which I'm actually willing to do. And I've killed, I was thinking of making a blaze spawner. I, I got a whole bunch of the actual blaze spawners. Yeah, I'm, it's only skeletons. Um, I got a whole bunch of the actual blaze spawners from the... Uh, fortresses nearby. Let's go ahead and turn this off and break it. <laughs> Give me that stuff back. There we go. I don't think I got the lever, but that's fine. <laughs> and the lever's not super valuable. Ooh, look at all this. Um, yeah, I got a bunch of the blaze spawners out of the <coughs> out of the fortress. Excuse me. And, uh, have another soul shard up to a pretty high amount, but not quite to the 1024 that I want. And I wanted to save that for blazes because I wanted a very easy source of blaze rods. Uh, but I might convert that into a wither skeleton one if uh, that seems prudent. Because it wouldn't be too bad of an idea to be able to uh, kill some withers and get some nether stars, because those nether stars are used in a decent number of recipes in Feed the Beast. I am disappointed at the soul shards, though, but thank you for the suggestion. That was certainly worth trying out. There you can see the, there's the blaze soul shard right there. Let's drop this stuff off in here. I had all this stone brick just in case I could build a little grinder system but uh no such luck oh there's the lever i apparently did get it put that back in here all right uh i think the next thing i'd like to get into a little bit is computer craft uh, i'm hoping and i haven't done any research on this so i don't know necessarily that this is the case i'm hoping however that I can set up some sort of computer craft interface to this red power uh, pneumatic tube network that I can basically type into it something along the lines of get five diamonds and it'll just yank it out of the, the barrels for me. Because uh, running around trying to find the specific item that I'm looking for is a bit painful and I'm hoping that computer craft might have something to automate that for me. I don't know if that's actually the case. I might be out of luck as far as that goes. Uh, so I will probably do some research here off camera uh, and then come back to you and let you know what I've found. 
So, we will see you in just a second. Okay, so in my research, I did not see anything particularly suited to what I was trying to do. I'm looking for something kind of like what you can do with Applied Energistics in the Ultimate Pack, where you can just walk up to an interface, search on your item, pull stuff out, and it pulls it from, in that case, disk storage. But in our case, we'd really be talking about, uh, you know, out of these barrels. Uh, Red Power does have a thing called a retriever, but you have to have the item on hand that you want to retrieve. So if I wanted diamonds, I'd have to have at least one diamond available to me to tell the retriever what it is I want to retrieve from the network. And I don't really want to follow the chest of one of everything method that they suggest in the wiki for that, because I've got a lot of different unique items and I don't really want to have to deal with that. So I think I'm just going to keep doing this the way that I've been doing it and live with it. But I did finish collecting all the necessary uh, spawners that I needed to complete the Blaze Soul Shard. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to see about setting up a system for obtaining Blaze Rods. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to go up here a bit into the ceiling of this particular area, if I can fit. Because I worked out a little plan in a creative world that I think will work out the way that I want it to. I just got to, whoa. I just got to figure out exactly how to set it up here. So let's put the soul cage in place. That would be one, two, three, four. This room is 7x7, seven seven, which is not the maximum possible area, but it's easier working in odd numbers, so I did not make it the 8x8 eight eight that uh, would normally be recommended. Now, what I want to set up first and foremost is a way of turning this thing uh, on and off. So I'm going to use this wireless receiver which is a red power thing. I'm going to place it right here. And I'm going to set it to 2. <laughs> Just because blaze starts with B, which is the second letter of the alphabet. That's the only reason that I had for that. And then we're going to run some red alloy wire to there. Very good. And then the next part of this is going to be setting up our trap room. I want to kill these blaze automatically, so since I can spawn them in the overworld, I want them to spawn on water. So I'm going to give them a two block high space to spawn and then one layer of water. So let's get over here. So two high block, one, two, layer of water, so then the floor is going to be here. And I'm going to put sort of rings in place like this. Red Power has a machine, I guess you would call it, called a transposer. That when it receives a redstone signal, it will... Ah, dang it. It will suck up all of the items that's within its reach. So I think it's a one block radius for the transposer. So we're going to use those to actually collect the blaze rods that the blaze drop as they uh, not burn to death because they're burning as they as they wet to death as they moisten to death. Oh, it sounds kind of gross. Um, as they as they die from being in the water, they will drop the blaze rods. And, uh, whoop. let's get up here. And the transposers will pick them up. So, in order to keep sending the transposers a redstone signal on a regular basis, we'll be using a timer. Let's get these transposers in. Whoops. Transposer. I want these facing up. 
like so. So we'll just kind of lean over the edge as we place them. Otherwise, I'd have to go get a screwdriver or make a screwdriver, and I don't feel like dealing with that. So let's just place them right the first time. There we go. Oop, and one more. I almost missed this one. Perfect. So that should cover the entire area. All right. Next up, uh, we're going to have to go down below. So we're going to come in here. And this should be fine. Let's set up a little... Let's place these. So I've got these redstone tubes. We're going to place them so that they connect to the transposers, like so. There we go, there's one. We'll work this one across. Oh my gosh. I've got, I think, stuck keys going on, plus the frame rate lag that I get on here is causing me issues. Uh, did I not make enough of this? I thought I only needed 11. What have I done wrong? Oh, come on, frames. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Where'd the rest of them go? Didn't I have 11? But right now I'm only accounting for 6. One, two, three, four, five, oh, six, seven, eight. Huh. That's strange. Did they end up in the transposers somehow? One, two, three. Oh, oh no. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, okay, wait. I messed that up. Man, I can't count worth anything. Come on, get in the doorway. Urgh. Oh my gosh, there we go. Let's make some more of those. So it's actually 15, 16, 17, so I need six more. That's not a problem. I've got ridiculous amounts of uh, pneumatic tubes already made. So I need six more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Man, I don't know why my lag is so bad right now. It was behaving perfectly fine when I was recording a little bit ago. But now it has decided to make my life miserable. There we go. That should be enough remaining tubes. Let's get back into the room underneath here. Alright, so that's connected. Connect those. That's already connected. We connect those and those. Oh, and I miscount. I, just, I need one more. <laughs> of course. Of course I do. One more. Just one more. And then I actually need just a plain dust. So we'll get two of those. There we go. So we got a red, another redstone tube. Very good. Excellent. All right. Now, the reason I needed one more is I need one to stick out the middle here. And there it goes. Then the chest will go there. So let's start placing the floor. What are you doing? This game, I'll tell you. Let's just place the. Can we place the floor level with here? Is that going to give me enough room? Oh, yeah, that gives me plenty of room. All right, so that's what we'll do. Let me work on that for a bit, and uh, I'll bring you back in when we have something more to show. 
Okay, I've finished the setup in this room. It's a little bit cramped, but basically I just built a little pillar around the uh, chest there with a staircase to access it. And we're going to put a little redstone dust uh, here to connect to the system. And now we're going to put a timer against it like so. So that timer is going to kick off by default every two seconds, which powers the transposers, which cause them to pick up anything that they have and bring it down, drop it in the chest. Uh, we're going to need to put a lever on that, because if you power a timer, it turns off. So that way we don't have that constantly ticking and uh, causing us issues. I'm also going to need another lever, or actually, you know what, we'll do it this way. Let me just put another block to the side here like this. And we will power our wireless transmitter from the same system. And we set that to 2 to match up with the wireless receiver. Up top, let's go up and check that out again. Because we're almost complete. So now that power is on. So if I put the soul shard in, hopefully I'm correct and this will not start spawning blazes. Okay, looks like we're good. <laughs> I was a little worried there for a second. All right, now let me fill in the ceiling real quick before I forget. So we don't really need all of this filled in or empty I mean for aesthetic purposes Oops. oh no oh no I cut I cut it off I cut it off I'm gonna die oh no 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 break the okay I broke it good 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 oh lag oh dear kill the blazes kill the blazes kill the blazes kill the blazes I can't even see I'm stuck stop killing me Oh, the frames are so bad right now. Oh my gosh. I can't even... Okay, there's one left. Got it. Whoo! Whoops. That was a mistake. Oh, my keys are stuck. There we go. Wow. Okay. Don't cut that signal off. Lesson learned. That must go down. Okay, so we can do this. Oh. <laughs> Man, that gave me a heart attack. Okay, we can put this here. Uh, won't let me put it there. Let's put that there temporarily. Do that. Do that. I can see that the signal's on, so I'm not concerned now. Wow, that took no time at all. All right, so now the system is set up. We're ready to go. Last step is to kill the blazes automatically. And we're just gonna do that with ice. Gonna place some ice strategically about here on the sides. And then when we break it, it will fill the room. And I want it to be still. I don't want, want flowing water here. So we're going to set this up in such a way that that's what happens. Break that, break that, and it fills the room. Perfect. Now, we don't actually need this to be accessible now, because everything will be done down here. So it should just be a simple matter of flick the switch. We should hear blazes start going. And we see it, the tube pulsing every two seconds. Now, so we should start hearing, there we go. Here come the blaze rods. Now, the problem with this system, the way that I have, hold on, they turned off the light. <laughs> Now, the problem with uh, the system as it is currently designed is that 
Uh, any blaze rods that were dropped by the blazes after I shut it off don't get picked up and might despawn. But I'm okay with that, because I will get enough blaze rods letting it run uh, that I don't care if a few despawn. All right, well, I think we're going to call that an episode because the frame rate issue is really ticking me off. What am I getting? Yeah, eight frames a second now, three. I mean, that's with the debug screen open, which for some reason I can't disable. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoy the, the blaze farm, especially the accidental, oh my gosh, I'm going to die. Uh experience that happened while setting it up and uh we will see you in the next episode